In the previous episode on the sensitivity analysis for right-hand side value changes, I showed you examples uh, where we changed right-hand sides within the allowable increase or decrease or within the range of feasibility, in which case we could always use the shadow price to determine the change in the optimal objective function value. But now we're going to consider what happens when we go beyond the range of feasibility. So consider this question, what if 220 pumps are available, right? So the right-hand side of the pumps constraint is increased by 20. This right-hand side is now increased by 20, right? So uh, we, you notice that, right, if you look at the sensitivity report of Gurobi, 220 is not, is outside the range of feasibility Right, range of feasibility, which is 174 to 207, right? 220 is above the 207, or alternatively, uh, increase by 20 is not less than or equal, right? It's not within the range, or it's not less than or equal. The 20 is not less than or equal than allowable increase, which is equal to 7, as we see here in the sensitivity report from Excel, right? Do, so, so what do we know? Well, well we can say, um, so the change in the optimal objective function value cannot be determined exactly using the shadow price of the pump constraint, which is 200, again, I'll say, dollars per pump, right? It cannot be determined exactly, right? However, however what? However, we can say, again, if uh, we change this right-hand side first by the allowable increase, so, right? If, uh, if right-hand side is, is, or were first increased by only the allowable increase, which is equal to 7, right? Then we would know what happens. The optimal objective value would increase by 7 times shadow price, so it would be increasing by $1,400, right? Uh, and further increase in the right-hand side is a relaxation, right? It's a relaxation of the model, meaning that it just gives us, um, allows us to choose from a wider range of solutions, right? So we allow more pumps, we could even have more feasible solutions, Right? So when it is a relaxation, we have more choices. Right? It's a relaxation of the model. Uh, it means that it can only increase the objective, optimal objective function value more. Right? If I have more choices, I can choose something that's better. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe there won't be anything better, but definitely I will not have a worse optimal objective function value. I can have it the same or better, right? Therefore, this value, which is the original 66,100, plus this increase we determined here, right? 1,400, right? Which is equal to $67,500. This is a lower bound on the optimal objective function value, right? It's the lower a lower bound, a lower bound, right? So what I can say, right? Uh, right? What, how do they conclude this? Again, I determine that the first seven extra pumps give me this much increase, and the remaining pumps of the 20 increase, right? Additional 13 pumps. I don't know how much they will give me, how much money, more money, but they will definitely not decrease the profit, right? So the increase will be by at least this, and that means the, the, the $67,500 will be the minimum value of the objective 
function or the optimal objective function value, right? So um, that's one way to analyze this. Another way, you could say also, if I write it beyond the allowable, I don't know what the uh, shadow price will be beyond the allowable increase, right? After the seven. But I can be, again, sure of one thing. It is not going to be more than $200 per pump, right? Why can I be sure of this? Well, uh, if you think about optimization, optimization, when we maximize the profit, we must be choosing the best opportunities to use the pumps first. And that means, uh, you know, if, we, if now it is worth $200, every extra pump is worth $200. As we add the pumps, we will run out of the good opportunities, the better opportunities, and we will only, will only be left with the worse opportunities. So that's something that will give us less, fewer dollars per pump, right? So we know that beyond the allowable increase, the shadow price will be $200 per pump or less, most likely less, right? Because it is a relaxation. Right of the model, and uh, and then right um, beyond the allowable increase, the shadow price may drop, may actually drop to zero, or it may be still some positive value, right? So uh, from that fact, if I were to uh, consider if the right hand side is increased by twenty, the optimal objective function value. Um, will increase by at most 20 times shadow price, right? First seven, I know it will increase by $200. And the next 13, I don't know by how much it will increase, but no more than $200. So that valuing all 20 at $200 will over overestimate, definitely not underestimate, will be an upper estimate on the increase. So this will be $4,000, right? So, uh, 66,100 plus the $4,000, which is equal to right, 70,100, is an upper bound on the optimal objective function value. Right? So, here I want you to see from one of those. Um, from, from considering just the first seven pumps, we get a lower bound on the optimal objective function value. And from considering the 20 pumps at $200, perhaps we're overestimating their value, um, we're getting an upper bound on the optimal objective function value. So again, right, putting the above two facts together, the optimal objective function value will be between between one there are one of those values sixty seven thousand five hundred and seventy thousand one hundred somewhere there we don't know how much it will be but it will be somewhere between those two right and uh, now regardless of what happens whatever the optimal objective function value we get again we are relaxing a binding constraint and the optimal objective function value will certainly change, right? So given that we change a right-hand side of a binding constraint and the optimal objective function value changes, right? Even though it changes, the optimal solution will certainly change too. Right? So um, I know again that the solution, optimal solution will be different than this. Why? Because I know the optimal objective function value, which I calculated through the use of shadow price, will change somewhere between the, to, to, to this value somewhere between those two limits. Right? Here is one more question. What if only 150 pumps are available? Right? So in this case, the right-hand side of the pump constraint decreases by 50. Right? So this right-hand side, again, instead of increasing it, we're decreasing it. Right? So, of course, uh, 150, as I, again, is 
outside of the range of feasibility, which is 174 to 207. Right now we're be below the lower limit. Right, or if you like, alternatively, um, decrease by 50 is, is actually not less than or equal allowable decrease, which is now 26. Right? You can see it as the difference between 200 or and 174, or you can see it directly here in Excel report. Right? So again, the change in the optimal objective function value cannot be determined exactly using the shadow price, which is $200 per pump. Right? However, again, we can consider this, this decrease of 50 incrementally first decrease by the allowable decrease. So, however, if at the right-hand side were decreased first by only the allowable decrease, which is equal to 26, what would happen? The optimal objective function value would decrease by by 26 times the shadow price, which would be $5,200, right? Further decrease of the right-hand side is a restriction, right? We're now contracting the feasible region. We're making it smaller. We have fewer choices, right? Uh, so it can only decrease the optimal objective function value more, right? So the, the, the 66,100 minus the 5,200, which is equal to 60, 900 is an upper bound on the optimal objective function value, right? So again, we have an upper bound. In this case, we have an upper bound, right? It may be this or it may be less. And another logic, right? If we say beyond the allowable decrease, right, the Shadow, the shadow price will be $200 per pump or less, oh, sorry, or more. Why? We are restricting. So, right, as we restrict, the, 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 the decrease in profit will be first only $200 per pump. But as we restrict, the solver might run out of the good opportunities and uh, uh, at $200 only. And then it might become even more expensive, so the loss in profit might be even more than $200 per pump, right? So, therefore, uh, if the right-hand side is decreased by 50, the optimal objective function value will decrease by at least 50 times shadow price, right? This is now... It might be the first 26 is definitely valued at $200, but the remaining 24 might be even more expensive, right? So we will decrease by at least 10,000. So the 66,100 minus the 10,000 is also an upper bound, right? So we can actually calculate this as equal to 56,100, right? This is also an upper bound on the optimal objective function value, right? So we have two upper bounds. So obviously, this, so, sorry, obviously, the stronger of them is more important, right? Uh, this is 
an even lower upper bound. So putting the above two facts together, the optimal objective function value will be at most 56,100, right? And again, given that we changed a right-hand side of a binding constraint, and given that the optimal objective function value changed, the optimal solution uh, will certainly change too. Okay, so this, these are the two examples uh, when we change the right-hand side beyond the, um, the allowable increase or allowable decrease or beyond the range of feasibility. And notice, in, uh, in, in both cases, we were able to determine the upper bound, and in one of the cases, we were able to also determine the lower bound on the optimal profit. In both cases, of course, when we changed the binding constraint, we had uh, a change of the optimal solution we would have to resolve the problem to know what it is exactly. And notice also that this, because it's a maximization, we could determine the upper bound, uh, an upper bound. However, if it was a minimization, we could always determine a lower bound. And one more comment is that, uh, you know, relaxation or restriction, we can only tell when we have an inequality constraint. When we have a constraint that is less than or equal, uh, then we know uh, increasing the right-hand side is a relaxation and decreasing it is a restriction, right? So we can tell something about the shadow price value beyond the range of feasibility. If it was greater than or equal, we would also know, right, decreasing would be a relaxation and increasing would be restriction when it was, if this was greater than or equal. But if we had equality, uh, we cannot say whether uh, uh, increasing or decreasing is a relaxation or restriction, so these bounds, we wouldn't be able to determine them. 